Coral reefs are home to a greater abundance of life than any other habitat. Perhaps a quarter of all life forms in the ocean thrive here in ecosystems that cover less than one thousandth of the ocean's area. Reefs encircle the globe, protecting the shores of tropical islands and continental coasts. More than 250 million people live near coral reefs and depend on them for food and income. Millions of tourists travel each year to visit these spectacular habitats and the beautiful white sand beaches that reefs provide. And we all benefit from the medicines derived from reef species. But these precious resources are at risk. Overfishing is taking away too many fish, fish that graze down unwanted algae and otherwise help to maintain the fine balance of life. Unmanaged coastal development is sending pollution and waste onto the reef. Deforestation is causing soils to erode into the sea, and nutrients from over-fertilized farms are washing into coastal waters, causing algae to grow out of control. Meanwhile, greenhouse gas emissions are warming seas and driving coral bleaching. The World Resources Institute's Reefs at Risk Revisited project analyzed the threats to coral reefs around the world from overfishing, coastal development and pollution, rating each reef by level of threat. In all, human actions have put 60% of the world's coral reefs at risk. When factoring in warming seas and coral bleaching, 75% of the world's reefs are under threat. Whether we live near or far from a reef, we all have a stake in their protection. Join us as we tour the six coral reef regions of the world to learn the stories behind these vibrant and vital ecosystems. 10% of the world's coral reefs are found in the wider Caribbean region, bordering the continental coasts of Florida, Central and South America, and encompassing the many island nations of the Caribbean Sea. Fringing bank and barrier reefs are most common, including the northernmost reefs in the world in Bermuda and the longest barrier reef system in the Western Hemisphere, the Mesoamerican Reef. Both fisheries and tourism are vitally important to the economies of the Caribbean countries. Fishing is an important livelihood, especially in the many small island states. Reef tourism attracts people from around the world, bringing jobs and income to local economies. However, overfishing, coastal development and land-based pollution are destroying the very reefs that support these important activities. These threats are most pronounced in the eastern and central Caribbean, where reefs are in close proximity to densely populated coastlines. Moving further west, towards the coast of Central America, many reefs lie further offshore and are more protected, though not completely shielded, from local threats. In the Middle East, the continental margins of the Red Sea and Persian Gulf support 6% of the world's coral reefs. The environments found in these two bodies of water are highly distinct. The Red Sea's reefs are located along narrow shelves adjacent to deep waters and support rich biodiversity, including many species of fish found nowhere else on Earth. In contrast, the Persian Gulf is very shallow, with depths no greater than 35 meters. High evaporation rates and lack of freshwater input cause high salinities and temperatures. As a result, the Persian Gulf has very low biodiversity, although many reef species are uniquely adapted to the harsh conditions. The greatest pressure on reefs is in the Persian Gulf, where rapid development along the coast, as well as activities associated with oil and gas extraction, are damaging reef ecosystems. In the Red Sea, tourism pressure is high along parts of the coast, such as Egypt's Sinai Peninsula. Pollution from ships and overfishing are major threats in both the Red Sea and the Persian Gulf.
Extending from East Africa to Sumatra, the Indian Ocean Basin supports 13% of the world's coral reefs, mostly along continental margins of Africa and Asia, but also among oceanic islands such as the Chagos Archipelago and the Maldives. Fishing pressure is high, particularly on reefs along the densely populated continental shores. Land-based pollution is also a threat, especially in Madagascar, where extensive deforestation has led to significant erosion and heavy sedimentation in coastal waters. In 1998, a mass coral bleaching event that affected reefs around the world hit this region harder than any other. Unusually warm seawaters harmed corals across the region and killed more than 80% of the corals in the Maldives, Chagos and the Seychelles. Today, many reefs have made a remarkable recovery from this event, especially in areas where other local threats, such as overfishing, are low. The Chagos Archipelago, which is remote from human contact, has shown particular resilience, signalling that coral reefs may recover faster from climate-related impacts when there are few other threats to contend with. Southeast Asia is home to the most extensive and diverse coral reefs in the world, including part of the Coral Triangle, the epicenter of the world's marine biodiversity. Nearly 140 million people in Southeast Asia depend on reefs for their livelihoods, a figure greater than all the other coral reef regions combined but such dependence has taken its toll. These abundant resources are under greater pressure here than anywhere else. Overfishing is the greatest threat and affects nearly all reefs. Growing human populations and dwindling stocks of fish near shore have also led to widespread use of destructive practices, such as using dynamite and poisons to catch fish. Widespread removal of trees, including coastal mangroves, has greatly added to sedimentation problems in nearshore waters. The reefs of Southeast Asia are also poorly protected. Only 2% of the several hundred marine protected areas that were surveyed were found to be managed effectively. Among the areas showing signs of promise is Wakatobi National Park, where local groups of fishers have started protecting fish spawning locations. By allowing this natural restocking of the reef to take place, the community is ensuring that they will continue to catch fish in the future. Australia is home to more coral reefs than any other nation, with 17% of the world's total. Most of Australia's reefs lie along the vast Great Barrier Reef, which stretches over 2,300 kilometres along the country's northeastern coast. Most of these reefs are far offshore, away from human settlements, where Australia has the lowest coastal population density of any coral reef region. Coral reefs are vitally important to Australia's economy. Tourism on the Great Barrier Reef generates more than $5 billion per year. Recognising their importance, more than 75% of Australia's reefs now fall within protected areas, notably the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park in the east and the Ningaloo Marine Park in the west. Both have closed off over one third of their reefs to any form of fishing. But even with such protection, Australia's reefs are not completely free from threats, particularly shipping traffic and runoff of pollution and sediments from the coast. Like all reefs around the world, climate change also poses a significant risk. About 40% of Australia's reefs have already been affected by warming temperatures over the past 10 years.
The Pacific Ocean spans almost half the globe, from Palau in the west to the coastline of Central America in the east. It contains one quarter of the world's coral reefs. Most of the western Pacific reefs are concentrated in three major island groups, Micronesia, Melanesia and Polynesia. The people of the Western Pacific are closely connected to coral reefs, and many make their livelihoods through fishing or tourism. Among the various islands of the Pacific, a clear pattern emerges. Remote, sparsely populated atolls are encircled by near pristine reefs, with a rich cover of coral, complex reef formations, and an abundance of top predators, such as sharks. By contrast, many reefs around densely populated islands are degraded by pollution and overfishing. In this way, the Pacific is a region of sharp contrasts and provides evidence of how human activities heavily influence reef condition. Across the region, there is a growing movement to develop local ownership and management of reefs. Such locally managed marine areas are reinvigorating traditional community practices that have been implemented on some islands for centuries. By taking ownership of their local reefs, many Pacific Islanders are confident they can safeguard them for future generations. While each coral reef region of the world is uniquely different, the threats to reefs are largely the same. Overfishing, coastal development and pollution are slowly killing our reefs. And climate change, if left unchecked, is a looming threat from which corals cannot escape. Reefs at Risk Revisited estimates that by 2030, more than 90% of reefs will be threatened by the combination of local activities and climate change. And this will rise to virtually all reefs by 2050. While it's too late to save some reefs, in other places, we still have a chance to reverse the decline. But we must act quickly to manage our activities to reduce the local pressures on reefs. Such well-managed reefs will likely be more robust to other changes. This will buy us time until we come together as a global community to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. These beautiful and vital ecosystems and the people and cultures which depend on them are too important to lose.